It's funny today, dating advice to young guys seems to be, don't focus on 20 year old girls now when you're in your 20s. No, ignore them. Grind away at becoming an old alpha up ahead in your late 30s, 40s, and then, then you'll be able to pull that same 20 year old that you've been ignoring for decades. I think this is taking the long way around just to get back to the same point you were at when you started. I do realize that the modern young guy today is invisible to most women because of their ridiculously high standards, and their standards are largely material, and as such, only the oldest kind of established guy up ahead in their 30s and 40s and 50s can give that entitled princess those standards. I know. I know I'm not blind to this. But as always on this channel, I'm talking about what I think a man ought to be doing without a woman as his carrot in life, without placing her as the end all and be all of everything in his existence. She doesn't want you? Fine. So what? Look, ironically, I'll admit this, as I got older as well, I was bitter. I resented the woman who was my age now after ignoring me in my youth and going after the older alpha established chads that they wanted me now when I had my stuff together. And conveniently now Chad was going after the 20 year old version of them. And I would think, yeah, where were you in my twenties lady? Now I can get the 20 year old version of you and not this old used up version of you. And the shopping instinct in women should appreciate this. Wouldn't they want the new version of something instead of the old used secondhand version of something. But anyway, today it's worse, I think, because most of us are staying away from each other altogether, being taught that we don't need each other, that we're better off alone creating lonely empires on our own, and that only a fool would want love in their prime. Yeah, why would anyone want to start a family when you're most fertile to start a family? The dumb thing today seems to be that rather than plant my seeds in spring, I'll wait until autumn or winter, worse yet, so I'm the exception to the rule. No, nature doesn't care. It wants you to plant your seeds when nature will provide you the best chance to grow that part of your life. And that goes for the psychological aspect too. Don't fool yourself, guys. You think you'll care mentally as much in your autumn and winter years when you're older and established about women as you think you do now when you're younger, but you won't. You know, I get a lot of cocky millennials in my comments lolling me for even thinking that love is a good thing to even aim for. It honestly looks like guys with decades of hearing the girls say, we don't need love, are doing exactly the same thing as women now. The dangerous thing is it's easier for men to be alone than women, which should worry women, but they're too short-sighted to worry about it. I grew up hearing women with their girl power slogans of, I don't need no man. I think that much of this modern idea that I'll build my career early on in my 20s and 30s into something perfect up ahead, then later I'll pick out the best women or men as though they were objects something we could just shop for when we saved up enough money. I think this is missing the point. And the point is that if we're saving up for objects that we're in the best positions to buy up ahead in life, they will also feel like objects to us. They won't feel like a person because the way we're engaging in the companion game is very sterile. It's cold, avoidant, it's impersonal. A recent commenter on my Discord channel, Osticon, said, if you meet a keeper woman while you're young, marry her. Don't roll the dice that you'll grow into a top tier Chad in your 30s, able to pull the best 20 year olds. Well, maybe you will. But if you've already got a 20 year old with a low body count and good values, don't screw it up. This is an extremely astute comment compared to the entire dating advice circus going on today. I think that many of us are wanting to have a do-over later in life with the younger girls we screwed up with, that we didn't have the courage for, that we didn't speak up for, that we didn't know what to say, we didn't know how to act, 
we weren't ourselves. We're looking to have a second chance. We're looking to have a second chance with the girls we screwed up with when we were young and naive. And look, I was too. There are more points in my youth than I can remember that it would be great to go back and have a do-over. But that's life. That's the building of character and learning from mistakes and trying to do better next time when you're presented with a similar opportunity. By trying to do the things you're afraid to do, you know, you should do, that's, I think, what we're trying to do as older chads have a more mature second chance. We have to realize that no matter how much we plan and wait and build our lives up over the years, that that girl we wanted in our 20s, guys, we won't get to have her again in some do-over or sweet revenge later when we have it all. (laughs) Have it all. Sounds like something women believe in, doesn't it? The courage of youth is the courage to be okay with looking foolish. If I can sum up my regrets of youth and most guys is just the ability to kind of let go in terms of caring what other people think. Be okay with looking stupid. If guys can focus on anything, it's that. Stop caring about looking foolish. And look, I know in today's overly image conscious fake online world. We're hypersensitive to our embarrassing image, following us online forever. So we never try anything again because we don't want to make a mistake, lest we fail even once. And that failure keeps following us online forever. And again, look, I'm well aware, guys, that women's expectations are ridiculous today and that they want these top tier alphas. But do you really want that kind of chick? before when you're young or later on when you're older? Do you want that particular type of girl? We can say most women out there don't want a young guy with nothing. I know that. But is this a person we really want, this shallow materialistic fraud in our older age? Why is she suddenly a prize when we're older and established, when she was a dangerous mess, a selfish, dangerous princess when she was younger? That really doesn't leave. No, the thing I notice is when I got older, and I think most women when they get older as well, you want something real. I think finding love is easier when you're young, simply because you're naive and optimistic. When you get older, in my experience, and my own rationality, no matter how stabilizing, made it much harder to commit to just any woman, because I'm more inflexible as I'm older. And I'm more pessimistic at my age. We're pushing everything away from us when we're older that is not a mirror to us. So sure, guys, you can get your young 20-year-old when you're older, theoretically, when you're established, if you've become successful financially, but she won't feel like a friend, not someone you can really love or trust in the classic sense. She'll be a success object to you and you will be to her. And you can say you're fine with that, but... You're basically just toys to each other. You're not people. And then later you get these gurus saying, no, you have to control your woman like a pet. That's the way to have a secure relationship. But that's because you've become so isolated and specific that you can't even let a friend in. Your world has to be exactly your way. There's no oxygen left in the room for anyone but you. And basically they have to hold your breath if they want to have a relationship with you. But if you're intelligent, you can't respect an empty shell. The dating coaches today talk about controlling your partner, almost keeping them as pets, that if she's not some sort of passenger in your car, your car, only your car, that she can get the hell out of your car. All this clever game theory stuff that men play. But the thing is, when you're older, you can't be controlled, either you or her. It's just too obvious and stands out. You're not naive and young anymore. So what's the lesson as far as I can see? The lesson is, whatever you love, love it now, gentlemen. Do it with your eyes open. Take calculated risks. Don't be drunk on love. Do it sober. But whatever or whoever you want to love, love it now. Don't save it up for upper head because you probably won't love it in the same way. As I've said many times, I loved skateboarding before I was a teenager. Now there's a mild nostalgia, but I don't love skateboarding. It barely registers for me. Too many people waste their energy on their youth, planning and being clever. You don't 
wait decades to write that book you always wanted to write or live in that country you always wanted to live in or visit, waiting for the older you to make your world safe up ahead. You know what we're doing, I think, by waiting for the older version of us to have the courage to do it, making all these excuses? We're actually waiting for daddy to pay for everything and make our world safe. Only you're your own daddy later in life and you're trying to enjoy your world through your son that's not there anymore. It reminds me of parents who destroy all the enjoyment out of their son's football game. They're trying to live through their kid. And I think that's what we're doing up ahead when we try to become old Chad. Do it all now. Enjoy every relationship when you have it. Don't think you've got decades ahead. There's just too many stories of men and women who let a good person go because they thought they could just upgrade. They don't appreciate what they have. We don't appreciate our youth when we've got it. We don't appreciate our bodies in our 20s, in our 30s. It's when we're in our 60s that we wish we made better use of our bodies or our time or our friendships or where we were. We were sleepwalking through many parts of our lives. The grass, as they say, is never greener on the other side because the quality of what you'll have ahead will be less and less in life. And even though you may become rich later, most likely you won't, but say you do, say you become rich and secure and stable and you can have and do anything you want. Most of the time, we're just buying that best skateboard now with the money and security we have as an older guy and trying to be that kid again. We're just not going to be enjoying skateboarding like we should have when the time was there. Don't save life for up ahead, gentlemen. I'm reminded of uh, that scene in the movie Collateral where Tom Cruise's character says, yeah, one day, one day, one day becomes never. Do it now because later won't come. And if it does come, that buzz of women will have worn off a lot. And then you think, what were all these clever grinding years for? What if, what if you've grinded all those years and you finally get there to where you want it to be and now you can have any woman you want and you just really don't care as much? It feels like a lie. It feels like now you have a second-rate prize that for the 20-year-old you would have been a first-rate prize. Too many guys try to save up for what they desired in youth and try and experience that truth later. No, the, the time to experience that was when it felt true when you were younger. I mean, how do you know what's going to feel true to you in 20 or 30 years? You're effectively experiencing a simulacra as a 50-year-old man. It's a bittersweet moment. It's embarrassing, but most guys don't want to admit it. Ride that skateboard when you're young. Work with what you have and appreciate the time you're in. You won't get your 20s back. You can't buy your 20s back later with the safe old man money running on the fumes of memory to get a buzz. You probably care less about buying the thing of youth anyway. You're wasting your time and your money. I hope that gave you something to chew on. Join the channel. I'll catch you in the next video or live stream. Later, guys. Bye.